human beings on this planet, I just have one simple question for you. Why do we wait for the worst to happen before we decide to change our ways? It's always when we human beings have been brought to our knees that we realize how insignificant we are, how we have no powers of our own, how much of a gift it is to just be able to breathe, breath that is not down to us. My name is Sylvia Michetti and I've come to realize that in many instances, life has to deal you a really hard blow for you to come to your senses, to even begin to recognize who you are. You need the rug pulled from under your feet for you to decide that, oh, it's time for me to stand firmly on this rug before this rug would disappear. Oftentimes, when the going is good, we get going with no care in the world, not asking ourselves, why am I having it so good? But when the going is bad, we're forced to retreat and reflect and possibly come back to our senses. Recently, a lady was lying on her hospital bed, diagnosed with uh, the big C, cancer, and she was given a few months to live. She was so weak and vulnerable and afraid of dying. But every day that she was still alive and her eyes opened in the morning, she would thank the good Lord for that day, something that she had never done since she was a child. She never cared about how it is that she was waking up every day and getting out of bed. So she decided that she was going to live each day gratefully, like it was her last. She literally became sick and tired of being sick and tired. But each day that she lived, she gradually got the confidence and the help to fight the disease. Bedridden, almost dead, but still hopeful. She realized that this can't be it. This can't be the end. Me, who drove nice cars, bought fancy clothes, partied in exotic places. No, I can't go like this. She replayed the fast-paced life that she had been living in her head. And for the first time, it felt empty, despite everything that she thought she had achieved. And she thought to herself, none of what I've done so far feels like true living. I haven't made any mark as a human being. I haven't touched any lives. I haven't created anything to ease the suffering of my fellow human beings. I haven't even loved anyone yet. I thought I was living the life, but really I was just merely existing. I want more now, but a different kind of more. I want better, a different, be a better kind of life that has meaning. I want to feel whole and alive again. And in that moment, she experienced a rebirth and she decided to change her life for the better, to change her perception of life and what it means to be part of this beautiful creation. Many people conclude that we all get at least that one moment in our lives that allows us to pause and change the trajectory of where we're heading in life. And this is a grace that is permitted to all of us, except sometimes it presents itself as a nightmare full of pain and suffering. And you think this disease or this situation is just slowing me down from enjoying my life. But oftentimes it is exactly what we need to strengthen us, to prepare us for what's next on our journey. And other times it's a buffer a buffer to stop us from that bigger tsunami that's coming in our future, if we, especially if we carry on on the, same, on the same path. So it's a demand for us to change our ways, especially as stubborn as we are as human beings. We need that necessary dose of suffering. And when we have mustered enough strength to overcome it, the picture then becomes much clearer. And if the picture was shown to us to see how much deeper we would have sunk, if we didn't get that wake up call, we won't believe it. And this brings me to the wonderful gift of contrast. When you are in poverty, contrast allows you to yearn for wealth. When you are in pain, contrast allows you to pray for relief. When it's chaotic all around you, contrast allows you to seek for clarity. And when sickness plagues you, Contrast allows you to long for wellness and well-being. 
When there's so much ignorance, contrast allows you to strive for knowledge. So nothing is without purpose, including even the most bitter of all our experiences. And this contrasting experiences, which we often want to avoid and run away from, are actually necessary to move us to the next level on our journey. So no matter how dire it may look, no matter how sick you may be, no matter how poverty stricken you are, believe it that these situations allows us to unfold into who we are becoming and eventually lead us to who we truly are. All of the sum total of my experiences has brought me to this moment. And so when I look back, I'm so grateful for the, even the bitter experiences that shaped my life. And for the lady with cancer, every day she was alive, she realized that it was a completely new day, a reset that has been granted to her. And if we all could just look at each day like a reset, you don't have to take yesterday's fears and worries and despair into the new day, unless you choose to, of course, but you can choose to live it as a completely new day. So many people go to bed and even though they've been given that opportunity to reset, they still wake up in the morning and immediately they remind themselves how miserable they were yesterday. I'm still so broke. <laughs> I'm still sick. I'm still single. And then they take on the same vibration into that new day and indirectly keep the momentum going until it becomes that perpetual cycle of unhappiness. Think about this. The lotus flower grows in the mud, but when it finally opens its flower bud, it's the most beautiful flower you can imagine. So yes, there will be mud all around you, all over you even, so you can begin to grow into your own lotus flower. A caterpillar might seem ugly to you, but you wait until it becomes a butterfly. Even the most beautiful garden will invite it over. A person may be spiteful and horrible, but you wait until they find a good example in you that they can emulate. A person can be in abject poverty, but you wait until they meet someone who believes in them and gives them that opportunity to create wealth. A person may be sick and dying, but you wait until they find the strength and the courage to truly live. So when you feel like you're going through that dark tunnel and you can't seem to find any light, it's not because there is no light. It's not because there's no help available to you. It's because class is still in session for you and there's still so much that you need to learn before you can graduate. Whether you graduate is up to you and the decisions that you then make thereafter. Whether you go back to that life that you used to live or you transform yourself from that caterpillar into a beautiful butterfly. And this will depend on the inner change that has happened within you through those lessons that you have learned from those experiences. So if life throws you a curveball, look on the bright side of it. Everything is moving us towards our perfection and giving us the opportunity to evolve and expand into a higher consciousness. So believe me when I say pain and suffering, it might last for an hour, it might last for a day, it might even be a week or a month, but I can assure you it won't last forever. So stay strong. Until next time, I wish you the strength to live your life fully, happy, and freely. Bye for now.